Health disparity is a term used to describe differences in health outcomes and access among different demographic groups. Such disparities are often influenced by social and environmental factors. People in the LGBTQIA communities, particularly transgender, non-binary, and intersex people, along with racial and ethnic minorities, experience health disparities caused by systemic barriers such as restrictive access to affirming and culturally responsive healthcare, increased medical mistrust, and fewer resources to address increased health disparities. For transgender, non-binary, and intersex participants, systemic barriers also exist in medical research, including restrictive eligibility criteria or binary gendered medical language that excludes some from clinical studies. One solution to remove these systemic barriers and increase diverse representation in clinical research is to degender our language in clinical studies. Transgender, non-binary, and intersex people should be included alongside cisgender people when assessing for cancer risk. For example, gender diverse individuals may be overlooked for prostate cancer diagnosis or treatment because providers don't realize they have a prostate. Through degendering protocol language, clinical studies can become more inclusive, not restricting access to a participant's current gender identity. Contraceptive language in clinical protocols is another area of improvement. Replacing terms like man, woman, male, female, she, her, he, and him with gender neutral and medically relevant terms such as participant and singular they or their will increase access to and coverage of studies. Degendering the clinical study protocol serves as the foundation for the inclusion of gender diverse participants and informs downstream study procedures such as SOGI, sexual orientation and gender identity data collection, which is critical to ensure that clinical studies are capturing the true diversity of our population. As an example, what we know about prostate cancer to date is almost exclusively based on cisgender men. Between January 2018 and July 2022, there were 141,661 publications on interventional clinical study results. Only 107, 0.08%, reported participation of transgender or non-binary patients, most on HIV and HIV care-related barriers, and none reported in cancer. Without the collection of SOGI data, it is difficult to determine if the LGBTQIA population is represented in clinical studies, and if the safety and outcomes are different for LGBTQIA people versus the general population. Through inclusive language and clinical protocols, there is an opportunity to mitigate health disparities by creating access to life-saving therapies and treatments for all people and measuring our impact. LGBTQIA people have been historically mistreated in healthcare settings. Creating welcoming, inclusive, and affirming clinical study environments is essential to earn the trust of LGBTQIA participants. This may be achieved in part by offering tailored recruitment materials and a statement of welcoming, and by ensuring that cultural training is available at clinical sites and for sponsors. Words and actions matter. Fostering inclusive language in our clinical research is one small action with a big impact. It opens the door for countless marginalized people who have yet to be seen and served. What are you doing to ensure that studies you are involved in are LGBTQIA welcoming? Can you add these steps to make them even more welcoming?